Why is Germany's recent apology an offer of aid for the Namibian genocide being pushed as a, a positive development when it is long overdue and insultingly inadequate? For starters, this is not the first time that Germany will apologize for the Namibian um, genocide. It did so in 2004, after the UN recognized the massacre of the Hiroru and Namakwa as a genocide. While the reiteration of apology is being couched as a positive development, we should marvel at the compensation that Germany is now offering. They are offering $1.3 billion as aid over the next 10 years. However, the question that begs an answer is, does the compensation match the crime? Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please sustain this channel by turning on your subscription and notification buttons. Thank you. First, let us try and understand what the crime against the Hiroro and the Namakwa is. The Hiroro and the Namakwa are two of the ethnic groups which are parts of present-day Namibia. They, like, other, uh, like others who now form the country of, uh, of Namibia, were under the rule of the German Empire in what was known as the German Southwest Africa between 1884 and 1915. Although Germany did not uh, accept that it had lost the country, the territory, until 1919. Now, the area occupied was one and a half times the size of the entire German Empire in Europe. Initial European contact with the area, which later constituted German Southwest Africa, uh, started with Portuguese explorers in 1486. As they did in other places, the Portuguese then ushered in traders and missionaries. And by 1805, the London Missionary Society had established a small uh, mission there. This mission was then transferred to the German Rhenish Missionary uh, Society, which uh, succeeded in founding churches throughout the territory. The presence of these missionaries in other parts, or, as in other parts of Africa, facilitated the establishment of merchants and farming outposts by Europeans. So German settlers arrived in droves drawn by economic possibilities in, uh, in mining and farming opportunities which were lacking in, in Germany. In 1884, under Bismarck, who was the Chancellor of Germany, Germany proclaimed itself the imperial protector of the land in order to secure its interest against other European powers like the British. Germany's claims on, on the land was confirmed during the scramble for Africa at the Berlin Conference. And in April 1886, a dual legal system with which the colony was to be administered was created. The system had one set of laws for Europeans and a different uh, set of laws for Africans. In 1890, the colony was declared a German crown colony and more German troops were sent there. By 1892, the South West African Company Limited, SWAC, was established by the German, British, and Cape Colony governments. 
um, to raise and and they intend, and they, it was set up to raise the capital that was required to expand the mining of minerals such as a uh, copper, which uh, Namibia is very rich in. Now, the German Colonial Society for West Africa, uh, also known as a DKGSWA, was also founded by German bankers, uh, industrialists, and uh, politicians to consolidate Germany's exploitation of, uh, of the land. So DKGSWA was then given the monopoly rights to exploit the rich minerals in the area. The DKGSWA investment paid off big time because in 1908, diamonds were discovered. And in addition to gold, copper, platinum, and other minerals, diamond brought the German investors enormous profits which did not only benefit the private investors who had set up the company but Germany as well. The indigenous people decided to then mount a really fierce resistance against the German occupation and their resistance you know got uh, built up gradually over several years. Now, the Hiroro and Namakwa have been described as incredibly capable military people. Many were literate and had become Christianized. Um, they were, so they were able to muster some horses and modern rifles with which to resist German occupation. Their resistance culminated in 1904 when the Herero and, Namak and, and uh, Namakwa rebelled against German colonial rule. During the course of their liberation struggle, about 100 German men were killed. In retaliation, the Germans decided to exterminate the Herero and Namakwa. Close to 100,000 Herero and 20,000 Namakwa who were predominantly women and children, were killed by the time that uh, the violence which Germany unleashed on them ended. They went on a killing rampage, killing men, women, and children. They tried to trap the indigenous people in the Waterberg Plateau. They continuously shelled the mostly unarmed uh, population with powerful artillery. They then routed the people who were trying to escape this raw violence and herded tens of thousands of unarmed men, women, and children into the Kalahari Desert, where thousands died of exhaustion and thirst. Those who survived were then forced into concentration camps where they were forced to work for Germans uh, uh, and where large numbers of them continued to die. Some sources actually say that the Germans were so determined to annihilate the indigenous people that they even poisoned their water wells. There are also researchers who have found out that the concentration camps were deliberately designed so that the people would die from ex uh, exhaustion and test because evidence has been found in death reports that were filled out in Germany for people who were forced into concentration camps even when they were still alive. Their death reports were written even before they, they died. So the death reports listed names, ages, and gender, and other information of people who were still alive at the time of preparing the death reports. The, the Germans then filled in death by exhaustion as the cause of death. 
So a big question which is yet to be satisfactorily answered is, how could the Germans have predicted the cause of death of living people who then died from what they wrote down in, a, in the death reports if they had not deliberately ensured that they died in a predetermined way? Another outcome of the brutality of the German campaign to annihilate the population of the Herero and uh, Anamakwa uh, communities was that hundreds of human remains, such as skulls and skeletons of victims, were collected and packaged for export to Europe to be used as raw material for what they called racial scientific studies. It is, of course, common knowledge that this genocide was the practice run for the Jewish Holocaust about 30 years later. So by the end of the onslaught, it is estimated that close to 100,000 Herero and 20,000 Namakwa, predominantly women and children, lost their lives. So in a nutshell, that is the crime. Let's now turn to what Germany thinks they need to do after over a hundred years of doing nothing to correct this wrong done to their fellow human beings. Okay, so they apologized. But we all know that words are cheap. How do you apologize to people who have been killed so brutally? or to communities that have almost become extinct. How do you apologize for all the land taken from them that Germans exploited exclusively until recently when Namibia became independent? And since then, Germany has, uh, Germans have continued to exploit. How do you appease those whose ancestral lands have been desecrated. Even today, the German community in Namibia continues to benefit from colonial land seizures and the subsequent apartheid regime. A large share of the country's economy is still controlled by Europeans. To add salt to injury, the Herero and Namakwa were not even consulted or party to the negotiation between Germany and the Namibian government. As a matter of fact, some commentators have noted that this so-called apology and offering of aid was determined in Germany only by Germans and it was only communicated to the Namibian government. If so, then this is another example of the beggarly position that most African leaders are content with at the expense of the majority of their population. The paltry 34 million euros per annum over a period of 10 years, which Germany has offered, has been classified as aid because the German government does not want it to be seen as reparation. Probably because they are scared that if it is seen as reparation, it could lead to people asserting their rights to claim more. This is of course the position of Western governments when it comes to the way they have exploited Africa and Africans in order to build up their economies. Another insulting aspect of, of this aid that Germany has offered is that it is the same amount that Germany currently gives to Namibia annually. So what is new? Now, let us compare this insulting aid to what Germany gave to Jews and Israel after the Holocaust. I say Jews and uh, Israel deliberately because a distinction was made you know about what was owed individuals from what was owed 
um, the country of Israel, which was not even a nation state during the Jewish Holocaust. As at um, 1989, West Germany had given $14 billion for Jewish property, which had been confiscated and also for forced labor. And according to the Jewish virtual library, not only did Germany agree to pay reparation, but they also agreed to pay Israel, which, like I said, did not exist at the time of the Holocaust, for the financial costs that was absorbed by Israel for the rehabilitation of those Jews who escaped or survived the Nazi regime and then came to the newly created Jewish state. Germany accepted to compensate uh, Israel for the material damage and losses and to negotiate with Israel and with representatives of diaspora Jewry for other reparations. Now, Israel's demands for reparations were robustly debated at the Knesset uh, in Israel, after which a delegation met with the West Germans at a claims conference. In 1953, after negotiations, West Germany undertook to pay a total of $845 million dollars and another $100 million was earmarked for allocation by the claims conference for individuals who had been affected and, uh, and the remainder of uh, uh, went to Israel. In 1988, the German government allocated another $125 million for reparations enabling uh, remaining Holocaust survivors to receive monthly payments of $290 for the rest of their lives. Uh, so they continue to earn money on a monthly basis for the rest of their lives. And in February 1990, before its uh, unification with uh, West Germany, East Germany also admitted for the first time that it was also responsible for war crimes that were committed by German people during World War II and agreed also to pay reparations. So in addition, in um, 1999, in response to numerous class action lawsuits in American courts, the German government and German industries agreed to compensate Jews and non-Jews specifically for slave and forced labor, which they performed for German industries during the war. Examples of uh, the German industries were the Deutsche Bank, Siemens, BMW, Volkswagen, and Opel. A foundation was also created called Remembrance, Responsibility, and the Future with assets of approximately $5 billion. So slave and forced laborers who were still alive at the time of the settlement could apply to receive a lump sum of payment of between $2,500 and $7,500 from the foundation. In all, over 140,000 Jewish survivors from more than 25 countries received payments. Why have black Africans never been seen to deserve any kind of reparations? As recently as 2018, the German government, this same German government, and the Conference of Jewish Material Claims against Germany increased their funding for social welfare services for Holocaust survivors by $88 million. This funding increase was to allow survivors 
to receive even more frequent and better quality home care, food support, transportation, and medical services. Again, I ask, why have Africans never been seen to deserve proper compensation for all the exploitation that we have suffered? Thankfully, the Herero are not buying into this insult uh, by Germany being packaged as an apology and aid. The Herero Paramount Chief Vekuli Rukoro has dismissed the deal between the Namibian government and Germany as an insult because it did not include payment of reparations. He goes further to call the deal a black cat in the bag instead of reparations for crimes against uh, humanity. He insists that no self-respecting African will accept such an insult in this day and age from a so-called civilized European nation. I hope the Namibian government and others like them are listening to Chief Vekuli Rukoro's words of wisdom. Thank you once again for, being, uh, for watching and being a part of the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please continue to share your comments and questions with us. Also, please give us a thumbs up and uh, share our videos with your contacts. See you next time.